what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, March 7th, 2024. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing, Addy OEA Jr. Joining me is LaCroix Poppy, Tim Ma Boy Gettys. Have you played Princess Peach's Showtime yet? I have not. Have Neither you? have I, but I saw the demo came out. Really excited about it. Yeah. Can't wait to get my hands on it. Maybe tonight. I think tonight that I, might be my little... I will say treat. I saw somebody tweeting about it, and they were like... Okay, this seems like it's aimed towards kids. It okay. seems like more of a kids game. Fair. Which, honestly, yeah, fair, but not necessarily what I'm looking oh, for. Yeah. And so now I'm like, oh, am I even going to try it out? Yeah. I, I might I might wait for the Tim Gettys impression. Okay, okay. I think you might be the one to put okay. me on this game or make me skip it. I'm gonna. Am I on Games Daily tomorrow? I think I am. Am I Let's on Games Daily tomorrow is the question. Oh, that's a big question. Me and you are? Oh, Me okay. and you are? Yes. Okay, cool. I'm going to try to play it tonight, and I will report back. Now, I want you to report right now about one thing. I will. I've been seeing some discourse online. Oh. Chadley? Yeah. Are you pro Chadley, anti Chadley? <laughs> Look. I, Baird is anti. Can, can I say neither? Like, he <sighs> doesn't bother me enough. Pick a to, side. Like, like that was, <laughs> if I had to pick a side, he's fine, you know? Mm -hmm. But, like, I, and here's Chadley what, centrist over here. Yeah, yeah. Chadley centrist. Kind of where I'm at. Because the thing about Chadley is his function, I adore. I love the little VR battles. I love mm -hmm. the way they use it for the summons. Like, that stuff's, that stuff's me, cool. Cool. Him asking me to go explore the world and all that stuff, I like it. I, I'm, a, I'm a big, I like exploring. I don't need him to check in with me every fucking That's time my I beef. do a thing, though. Yeah. And you know what? There's just something, and this is this is not a, a, a critique of the, the performance or any sort of way, but there's just something about how he talks. Where I just don't fucking See, trust. My thing I mean, is, it's punchable, right? That's, like, the that's thing, what is, it is. They I got, get it. They get the dorkiest kid ever to check in with you every two seconds in that game. Yeah. And if it was something, if it was somebody else. Like if it was, if it was somebody who was like Barrett, like not, not real. I mean, real Barrett is great too. But if it was like video game Barrett that was checking in with you every two seconds, is like, whoa, have you got the thing? Like that's how Barrett talks to me. If he was like checking in, I'll be like, all right, Barrett's kind of cool. But the it's the fact that it's fucking Chadley. I mean, this fucking child. I'm with so glasses. You're making a lot of child? sense. You're making. He, well, he's this <laughs> fake little dude, right? But yeah. here's the thing with him is you're you're right. Everything you're saying adds up. But his name's Chadley. I'm like, I feel like it takes a lot of balls to name a character Chadley and have him be this character. I respect the choices. And I yeah, I my thing is when they first reintroduce him, because I do the thing, they give you the option to be like, who the fuck are you? Yeah. And, I, and I did that because I was like, who the fuck is this guy? And I was like, oh, yeah, he's in the last. Oh, one. yeah, he's that. Dork. Um, but when they first reintroduce him, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, lo I love the character design in this game. Look at this little fucking dork. <laughs> yeah. this fucking, oh, I'm Chadley. His name is Chadley. Like, at first, I'm like, that's fucking hilarious. And then the 30th time he calls me up after I fucking collect some loot at a pond. I'm like Chadley, leave me the fuck alone. Be cool, all right? bro. Yeah, like, you don't you're, need to you're, call you're, me every two you're seconds. Creeping. A there, little there, too hard. There here. are some moments that it works of him being just a, a little weird goober who's a, a robot uh, made by Hojo. Right? Is uh, is his whole backstory? Um, where is that real? <laughs> I thought yeah. he, I thought it was a real kid this whole time. Uh, no. no, he's a robot. <laughs> was um, that last game? Was that yeah? Is <laughs> that so, the ending of this game? <laughs> there's like the slums underneath the uh, gold saucer, and he's like trying to be incognito, and that's all I'll really say about that. But that's like there, he's got his moments, but those are very few and far between. You know, Hojo's yeah. a sicko. Why is Hojo making chat? Hojo be fucked up, man. The, yeah. the crazy thing about Final Fantasy VII, the the remake and rebirth side of it all, is like there's so many iconic characters from the original, and then they add new characters. And I do love that you can't really tell yeah. who's new and who's old. Like when you, this is the beginning of rebirth. But when you first start the game, you're in Nibelheim, and then you meet Tifa's like boxing trainer or like fighting trainer, mm. and it's the most epic intro for this guy. That's just like. So over the top and such a character, but doesn't really have much to do with anything. But it's mm. like, oh, he had a couple lines in the original. Here he is again, you know? Yeah. And then you put it next to Chadley. You put it next to, what's his name? Roche? Oh, yeah. Roche, was he not in the original? No. Roche Re the You're original. lying. No, dude. Not You're lying. Yeah. Why is he so important? And he's so important. And I love <laughs> because it. Because he's the balance, cool as dude. shit. You can't, you can't have he someone shows up so that much. cool without having someone as lame as Chadley to balance it out, okay? Roche being a new character blows my mind. Because yeah. I would have assumed he was one of the main characters nah, in the last game. That's really funny. Uh, Tim, we're, we're spending time here, right? Mm -hmm. I do have a couple of more things I want to talk to you about. I have beaten, finished, Penny's Big Breakaway. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. That game was awesome. Hell that yeah. Game was cool. Oh, my God. I knew you'd come around. Yeah. I the, knew it. The deep, the, you were absolutely right. Where the deeper you get into that game, the more you understand what it's going for. And it is like, I, 
I totally understand the vision here. I can tell that it's one it's one of those games where I'm like, I don't think this is for everybody, right? Yeah, like I don't absolutely think absolutely not. I don't but think it's it, for us. But it's for us. Like if you're somebody who is a 3D platforming sicko, if you're somebody who likes both Mario and Sonic, mm-hmm. is it's that game. Like it yeah, is man. it is them merging the things that make those games great, right? In terms of the locomotion of Sonic, in terms of like the momentum of it, but then also yeah, the tool set of a 3D the, Mario, the design and like care and love of a Mario. Yeah, <laughs> like it's those two things put together, and I got really hooked at, on it over the weekend, and yeah. Like yesterday, I was at my desk. I was here. Like, I was here. Uh, I was like waiting for Greg to finish the thing so we could do a meeting. And I was like, okay, what do I do with my time? And I was like, you know what? It's time. Let's finish time. this thing up. Oh, yes. Put that on my main screen. Put some Tim Rogers on my second screen. Oh, what an experience. Great. You're yeah. just thriving out here. So that's first and foremost. <laughs> Secondly, mm. I've been watching the show called Shogun. Have you watched Shogun? Oh, my God. If y'all aren't watching Shogun, you got to watch it. It's on Hulu the day after it's on uh, FX. F- that's, I've that's been saying show. this, dude. I've been saying this for a long time. Uh-huh. FX. Goated. Best kept secret. Yes. Right? Go to or uh, Apple TV. Best kept secret. If people are like, oh, there's too many streaming services and whatever, you can get rid of all of them. Find a way to get FX, who lose a good answer, and Apple TV. They be coming out with banger after banger. Dude. And FX right now, the fact that the Shogun is the type of show that is and it's as good as it is, the cast that it has. Oh, I still haven't seen episode three. Little I've, I've also not seen ep- episode three. Um, but yet. episodes one and two are absolute bang. I was not expecting to get as into it as I am, but I, after finishing episode two, because I started watching it as a way to get hyped for Rise of the Ronin since that's mm. around the corner. And also, like, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of samurai stuff and, like, a lot of, like, a lot of a, a, a lot of games coming out soon, right? You got um, the Assassin's Creed Red that's rumored to be coming out this year. Ghost Shima Two is going to come out eventually, right? So I'm like, oh, let me watch a show. Let mm-hmm. me get something to put me in the mood for Rise of the Ronin. Whew. Finished episode two. I'm like, yo, this is. I'm in the mood. This is a baby. TV show. Like, yeah. this is a this is a show right here. So yeah, Shogun is sick. Mm-hmm. I hope we get to talk more about it. But for now, Tim, let's talk about today's stories, which include our live reactions to that new Fallout trailer, uh, BAFTA Game Award nominees, and more. Because this is kind of funny. Games Daily. Each and every weekday, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe if you love what we do support us with the kind of funny membership on patreon or youtube to get all of our shows ad free watch support them live and get a daily exclusive show for a chance to be a part of the show submit your thoughts and opinions as youtube super chats as we go housekeeping for you the x cast reaction to yesterday's xbox partner preview is up with a new podcast episode accompanying it that's up over on youtube.com slash kind of funny games Thank you to our Patreon producers, Carl Jacobs, Kieran Hovasapien, and Delaney Twining. A Hovasapien, that's a human that loves Jay-Z, right? Love you. Thank you. I appreciate was, it. I haven't hold I also it. love that shirt. This is my second favorite shirt that you own. Oh, thank you. I my favorite it. one is, I think it might be your profile picture, but the, yeah. the really colorful one. Oh, yeah. That's my profile picture on Twitter. I thought you were going to say the X-Cast sweatshirt because that's my favorite. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a classic too. Yeah, yeah, I know. Your profile picture one. This, yeah. You do not wear this nearly enough, but I also no. get. Yeah, I got to save it. You got to save it. It's, save a, it's a moment. Okay. I was wearing that for my birthday. Like, like, yeah, yeah. I got to save that for the special the birthday suit. Uh, today, brought to you by Shady Rays and BetterHelp, but we'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. It's time for some news. We have four stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one. A trailer went live this morning. It is the Fallout Amazon TV show trailer. I've not watched it. Tim, I've not watched it. Tim's not watched it. We're going to watch it right now. Barry, you can bring it up. Well, that was cool. Hello there. Is that my guy? Here to show you, uh, is that Walton? Guys. It is. He's gogging. Whoa. That was cool. A veritable Camelot. The nuclear age. Not made by God Almighty, but the working man. Can you turn it up just a little bit? You can be a hero by purchasing a residence in a vault tech vault today. Because if the worst should happen tomorrow, the world is going to need you to build a better day after. I like this. Bring in shots at the wasteland. The mission of the vaults should be important to everyone. come up to the surface one day and restart civilization. Interesting. Can you tell me what's happened in the last 200 years? Holy shit. You're an actual vault dweller. I am. (laughs) I thought all you dipshits were dead. What you're doing is insane. I don't 
Oh, they're doing the song. It isn't like the vault out there. It's big. This looks like a TV show. Doesn't look like a YouTube fan film. Oh, yeah. I've had a rough week. Practically every person I've met up here has tried to kill me. I'm simply going to harvest your organs. <laughs> you need to go home. You come from a world of rules, of laws. You should not be alone. Brotherhood of Steel. Why did you join the Brotherhood? To hurt the people who hurt me. People are going to come after you. That dog meat. Ain't much stage clean up here, Vaulty. Vaulty. Oh, the fucking gore. Let's go. Well, now that is a very small drop <laughs> in a very, very large bucket of drugs. <laughs> Look out at this wasteland. Epic version Looks of the song. Like chaos. Yeah. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. Bro. The town game blown up. The Metaton action. Oh, they, they have the fucking bear. The bear. The, I forget what they call it. The, there's a name for it. It's like Yao something. <laughs> what is happening here? <laughs> Everyone wants to save Yao Gui, thank you, Chad. So disagree on how. There you are, you little killer. Hell yeah. This looks We're awesome. in the era, man. Yeah. I mean, Fallout All is such- All episodes at once, god damn it. Oh, you don't love that? No, I hate that. I'm kind of with you. Like, I kind of would have liked the like the week-to-week -week conversation around it. I do appreciate that part of TV, but also, it coming out at the same time means I'm just going to binge it all in one weekend. And that's yeah. going to be a really good yeah, weekend. Yeah, people talk about it for one weekend and then never again. Yeah. But that looks awesome. Like, yeah. this looks very, very, very impressive. I am very happy that in this era of the streaming wars and where we're at, we're still getting great video game adaptations. I never played Fallout. I'm not a Fallout guy. This seems to be nailing every single thing I've ever seen from a Fallout, and it seems very genuine. Is that uh, yeah, right? I would, I, would, I would agree with that. I can't wait to see what you think Like after watching the show, because... I could see why you wouldn't be into the Fallout game, just knowing who you are as a gamer, right? Like, open world isn't necessarily your favorite thing. Yeah. Well, like, unless it really works for a franchise you love, right? But I think the world of Fallout might vibe with you. Like, it's weird, it's quirky, but it's also very interesting and fun. I um, love the dichotomy between the, the vault and the outside. And, like, I know that's, like, the big thing, the big reveal of the moment of them leaving. But even just seeing it presented this way, like, I, they're doing a good job. And, like, the I love the, the colors and, like, the, the bright blue and yellow contrasted against the, like, drab scary yeah. of the outside like they got a lot going on here fun cast the jokes hit like everything about this i'm like i'm digging the vibe for sure yeah and they i mean, seem to be like setting out like walton goggins with like him being the what do they call him uh, a ghoul. Plus, uh like a ghoul like yeah. giving him backstory of seemingly being someone who uh existed before the bombs dropped um that's good like there's just gonna yeah, be I really some wonder really what they're good shit here gonna do with that. Because Chad, do ghouls just live longer? Because the bomb, what it would have been hundreds of years. Yeah, she says like two, like what's happened in the last two hundred years or whatever. Yeah, so is that a deal with ghouls or like what's the deal with that, Chad? Let me know. Somebody in Intro Metal says yes. Owen oh, Jesus says yes. And so yeah. yeah, that's I really like that idea that he's somebody who was there before and then like witnessed just the transformation of the world. Yeah. Um, also, sound design I want to shout out. Like in the like very early parts, you you hear like a little bit of like the ticking, and that's like the radiation detector uh, of like what the game tells you of like, oh, you're about to get into some radiation, like you're about to get into some danger and shit. Like that's cool. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate the hole in the chest when he shoots the guy because yeah, that is very great. like Fallout is very gory in that way. So to even ca to capture that in the TV show, I think is really cool. And yeah, my thing with it is you know you talk about where we're at with. TV shows and just video game adaptations in general and how we're in such a good place. Fallout is one of those ones where I think it was, no pun intended, like prime for an ad adaptation. Like it's one of those things where like that, the world of Fallout is so fun. It's so cool. It's so like um, enjoyable to be in. And I like I, a TV show sounds like a slam dunk for Fallout compared to so many other video game franchises that do have adaptations announced, right? Like this is one that I would expect to hit and I'm happy that it's in the right hands because what it's Jonathan Nolan who's done Westworld before, who's worked with Christopher Nolan on on uh, his stuff, right? Um, and yeah, like scene to scene, 
everything we're seeing looks cool. The Brotherhood of Steel looks cool, <laughs> looks accurate, right? Like the I mean, power suits awesome. look the cool. The costume suits look the costumes look amazing. The design of the the mech armor, whatever the hell it is, looks yeah. very authentic to the statue we had at IGN for many years. So they nailed it there. What's up with dog meat? Is that every dog's name or is that a specific dog's no, name? No, it's it's kind of like I was gonna say Epina, right? From Zelda. It's one of those things that like any dog you say meet, that name again. Plus? Epina? Epona? Epona. Okay. Epona. Wait, you guys Epona. not do Epina? I could have sworn I've heard you say Epina before. Definitely not. No? It's Epona. You could, you could not catch me ever saying <laughs> yeah. Epina. Really? Bullshit. I could have sworn I heard somebody in this office say Epina. <laughs> but yeah, it's kinda like an Epona or like, we're, we're, like every the dogs are different, but people just name it dog meat. Like the default okay, name okay. is got dog it, meat. Got it, got it. So cool, people just cool, name cool. it dog meat. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. This looks rad. I saw uh, Jake step in the chat saying that they're a huge fallout fan and that this looks great to them. And like, it seems like the chat's into this too. Like, that's awesome. Like, yeah. good job y'all. They nailed it. And Amazon prime. They, they've had some hits, man. Like oh, the, yeah. the teams that brought you the boys and invincible, invincible. and, uh, which by the way, both are coming back. Oh, when's invincible? Uh, next Is week. Soon? Is it really next week? Oh, let's go. Yeah. We're eating. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to story number two. The BAFTA Game Awards 2024 nominations have been announced. Uh, this is Chris Scolian at Video Games Chronicle. The nominations for the BAFTA Game Awards 2024 have been announced. Who announced them? Oh, uh, man. Lucy James and a crew of panels, including yeah. your boy. Yeah, boy, baby. <laughs> I was up this morning. I was up at 4.45 a.m. this morning. An ungodly hour. A time that I didn't know existed, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up and I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know the clock could strike this hour. <laughs> um, and yeah, like we... Went online. We, uh, uh, you know, talked through all the nominees. It was a very fun time. Shout out to the BAFTAs for hitting me up for that. Um, and yeah, it aired at 6 a.m. So like the call time was at like, what, 5.30? At 5.30. And so, oh, man. Oof. Oh, am I feeling it right now? No. Thanks for this coffee. Thanks for this coffee, everybody. Uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2 leads the pack with nominations in nine separate categories. Other big scores are Alan Wake 2 with nominations in eight categories. Baldur's Gate 3 with nominations in eight categories. And The Legend of uh, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom with seven. All four games are nominated for the Best Game Award, along with Dave the Diver and Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I do have the full nominations list here. Uh, I want to pick out some categories that stick out. They have the EE Player's Choice, which is like the crowd picks mm -hmm. uh for a game of the year it's picked by a panel of judges, judges right but the crowds the crowd will vote uh on there you have Baldur's gate 3 cyberpunk 2077 fortnite zelda tears of the kingdom lethal company and marvel spider-man 2 uh lethal company fun to see there right yeah like, look at that compared to the rest of the games on the list i mean fortnite very fascinating to see there i mean hey players like the game right and they, yeah. they keep getting content there it's like i i do we this is a conversation we've had a lot but like how do you talk about a game that is not a brand new release, but has as much new content in it, if not more than any a lot new of release coming yeah. out. You know Especially I mean? a game that is now releasing new games in it. When you look at the um, Fortnite Music Festival, and then also like Lego Fortnite and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? The Rocket oh, Absolutely. Racing, you yeah. know, it's like how do we? That's Fortnite. Yeah, that's Fortnite, right? So how do we? How do we uh, categorize that? So yeah, I can see why why it would be in there. Uh, we got British game, uh, Cassette Beasts, Dead Island 2, Disney Illusion Island, Let's, Let's go. go, Football Manager 2024, Viewfinder, and Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Realms of the Ruin. For best narrative, they got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Dredge, Final Fantasy 16, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Tears of the Kingdom for best narrative? I appreciate it. Yeah. Because it's like, it's, it's one of those things where, yeah, it's very simple, and... It's it is powerful, not, though. It, it's powerful. It really is. And it's like, I like that it, things don't need to be the most, like, uh, the script is an entire freaking Bible of things. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, cool. There's a narrative there. Yeah. I, uh, I was doing a stream a few days ago of me ranking, like, my top 100 games. And I got to the top two, and it was the conversation with myself mm -hmm. about Breath of the Wild versus Tears of the Kingdom. Are they both in my top two? If they are, which one's my number one? Where'd right? you land? Tears of the Kingdom, number one. Where did, what about Breath of the Wild? Number two. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I did the thing. I, yeah, I think yeah, I okay. think those are my two favorite games of all time right now. I I think that I have to do. I go with Tears. Yeah, and I think it means Breath of the Wild's not on my list. I I feel like really the experience to me. Like I understand that like nothing will ever be like that first time playing the Switch and the whole adventure. But Tears of the Kingdom upped it so much for me, and like I enjoyed it even more to a level that I'm like I can't find a reason to want to go back to yeah. Breath of the Wild ever again. See, for me, nothing will ever hit like that first time of playing Breath of the Wild. Like, Breath of the Wild might still be my best gaming experience of all time. You know, like, I, getting to know that um, Hyrule for the first time, like, first discovering where Kakariko Village is, or getting to Death Mountain, or get, get, getting pretty much, like, any location in that yeah. game, my first time getting there, it's like, 
well, this is cool. Like, this is such an experience where it's Tears, Tears of the Kingdom. It was the fact of, man, there's so many technically cool things in this game when you're talking about the systems of being able to build things, being able to fly, being able to go up in the sky, below ground, all that stuff. But the thing that really pushed me over for, I think this is my number one, is the fact that the story is very powerful. Yeah. Like, I like the story so much more than Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild was one of those ones where I'm like, all right, it's, good, it's a good to great story, but... I'm way more in, invested in the gameplay here, whereas Tears of the Kingdom had moments that got me emotional. Yep. Right? I think of the ending of Tears of the Kingdom, mm. obviously no spoilers, but come on, man. Yeah. That like reveals in the oh man, like even the flashbacks, which was one of the main things I didn't love about Breath of the Wild. The flashbacks in Tears of the Kingdom were so good by comparison. I agree. And I'm like, man, I can't not put this above it. Moving on. It, you know, it's funny. I, I just mm. want to say when, when we think about the moments you talk about, like seeing Kakariko Village for the first time in Death Mountain, thinking about the two games as a whole. One of the moments that sticks with me the most is the first time you drop down into the depths and you hear that sound effect of yeah. the like the oh, that just that yeah. terrified me in this way that I never expected to feel that emotion from a Zelda game. And uh, it's that will always I feel like 30 years from now, I'm going to still remember the first time I did that. Oh, yeah. Uh, we got technical achievement. Uh, the nominees are Alan Wake 2, Final Fantasy 16, Horizon Call of the Mountain, The Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Marvel Spider-Man 2, and Starfield. Great list of games for this category. Yep. You know, and I'm also very appreciative that this category exists because I, I feel like this is the, some of the stuff that I care about a lot in games. You look at Spider-Man 2, the fast travel system, the way that they mm. use the dual sense and the haptics, so damn impressive. Tears of the Kingdom, obviously, we could talk about for days about how the hell does that game even work. Alan Wake 2, everything that they did yeah. with just Really like, cool FMV stuff they do in that exactly, game. Exactly. Pushing the, the visuals forward of what games can uh, be. And then Horizon Call of the Mountain, like, you know, for what it is, a beautiful game in VR. And oh, yeah. Like, any, I, I still haven't played it, but anytime I saw you guys playing out there and seeing it on TV, I was like, how is this a video game? Yeah, that was the and one thing I called out this morning was the fact that that is one of the best looking VR games I've ever, I've ever played, right? And it's, it's that thing where it looks like Horizon, right? I feel like I'm, I'm it, I know we say this all the time of like, man, this game makes you feel like Eloy. Eloy? Eloy. I felt like I was in Epina. that world looking around. Ep Ep <laughs> Epina. Uh, but yeah, you look around, it's like, that game is gorgeous. When you see the vistas, when you're climbing even higher and you get to see the view, incredible stuff. Uh, and Final Fantasy 16, the achievement of uh, setting PS5s on fire. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, we got game design, Cocoon, Dave the Diver, Dredge, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, Marvel Spider-Man 2, and Viewfinder. Hell yeah. Yeah, man. It's great. Uh, animation, Alan Wake 2, Hi-Fi Rush, Hogwarts Legacy, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Star Wars Jedi Survivor, and Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Man, and I saw a video yesterday on Twitter of um, a comparison of Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace on PlayStation 1, uh, but because the, the PS5 version either came out or is coming out, yeah. and it was the PS5 version of that game, and then it cut to Jedi Survivor footage, and it's just freaking hilarious, man. Incredible. Jedi Survivor is a, a wonder that it exists like you're even, like that is a goddamn star wars game man a thing of dreams yeah man and also man super mario brothers wonder yep. you know oh, like a case great of animation how well a how, how, like how good that art style is really elevates just what 2d mario like modern 2d mario is it's a game you can't talk about without talking about the animation exactly uh speaking of which artistic achievement they have alan Wake 2 Baldur's gate 3 cocoon diablo 4 uh, final fantasy 16 and hi-fi rush uh, for audio achievement, Alan Wake 2, uh, COD, Modern Warfare 3, Hi-Fi Rush, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Marvel Spider-Man 2, and uh, Star Wars Shadow Survivor. Fantastic. Oh, music. We got to talk about music. We have uh, Alan Wake 2, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Baldur's Gate 3, Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Spider-Man 2, and Star Wars Jedi Survivor. Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, no FF16. What your boy got to do? Again? <laughs> How did this happen again? We Tim, can't, we, can't we, we, can't. we really needed to put Assassin's Creed Mirage on there. I, as someone who is a big Assassin's Creed fan could not even fucking tell you what the motifs are in Assassin's Creed Mirage outside of the Ezio family uh, song that they use for every fucking game. That's crazy. No hate on any game here. This is bullshit. <laughs> Listen, you know, they're not British. All these other games were made, but were worked on by at least one you're, British you're person. You're correct. <laughs> you you know? are correct. You know? uh, let's close out. Oh, man, there's some pretty good categories. Let's do performer in a supporting role. You have uh, Andrew Wincott in Baldur's Gate 3, Deborah Wilson in Star Wars Shy Survivor, Ralph Innocent in Final Fantasy 16. I mean, come on. Uh, Sam Lake in Alan Wake 2, Tony Todd in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and Tracy Wiles in Baldur's Gate 3. I believe the two Baldur's Gate 3 characters are Carlock. I forget the second one. I forget who the other person is. Um... 
But yeah, pretty good list, right? Like Ralph Innocent yep. in Final Fantasy 16 oh, is easily my pick. Incredible. But also, you know, shout out to Tony Tony Todd as Venom. <laughs> shout out to Sam Lake, who's Sam Lake. <laughs> you know, like Oh yeah, dude. Pretty pretty I think I, this last year was a pretty good year just in terms of roles. Like recognizable characters, who it is. Oh man, like these are characters that I either identify with or I can like see when I can remember. Yep. And you know? I think we're going to for a long time. Like when those character names come up, we're not gonna be like, who is that again? We're gonna know. Yeah. Who does Tracy Wiles play again, bless? Tracy Wiles. Car- God damn it. Carlac? Carla? I said Carlock. Yeah, you did. Carlac. You're on it today with the name for the Listen, I've been up since 4.45 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from me? You discovered a new time today. I, get it. I know, man. I'm not in my universe, by the way. Like this, is, I'm in a different universe than what my normal one is. Uh, leading role, we had Amelia Tyler from Baldur's Gate 3, who I believe was the narrator. Cameron Monaghan, Star Wars Shadow Survivor. Najee Jeter, uh, who's Miles in Spider-Man 2. Neil Newbin, who I believe is a Starian in Baldur's Gate 3. Samantha Bayart from Baldur's Gate 3. Who, oh man, who was that, Carlac? Barrett, I'm gonna need you to do your Googles. <laughs> do your thing, Barrett. And then uh, Yuri Lowenthal, of course, Peter Parker from Marvel Spider Man 2. Great list. <laughs> what? What? Look at Tim. L- look at Tim right now. What, what, what's up? <laughs> did I say something? Did I mispronounce somebody's name? Who was it this time? You didn't do anything wrong. Here. Okay. You did nothing oh, wrong. Oh, I What the see. fuck? Are you kidding me? Did nobody on the judges panel play Final Are Fantasy 16? Are you kidding 16? me? But no it's hate nominated for other anyone things. here. <laughs> How yeah. did Ben Starr not get nominated for leading role? I guess Sid was nominated. Yeah. 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 Y'all got three Baldur's Gate 3 people in there. You don't have Ben Starr for Clive? Jesus. Oh, man. It's because his name is Clive. It's an anti-Clive agenda <sighs> going on. I, that's fair. Oh, that's wild. Uh, debut game, we got Cocoon. Clive the versus Diver. Chadley. That's tough. Oh, that's a tough one. I'm like in a around. fight. Who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got money on my boy Chadley. That man looks like he's throwing Chadley's a better name, I think. As far then as Clive? Yeah. Like, it's a better joke name for sure. If I meet somebody in real life named Chadley, I'm going, you know, what private We're school? making fun of them. <laughs> We're making fun of them. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, you know what? As I say that, I'm sure there's you a Chadley listening. You wouldn't know because they are going to uh, introduce themselves as Chad. That's fair. You know? If somebody told me their name was Chadley, I'd be like, I'm gonna be like, all right, cool. So you're going to school to be a butler? Like, what's the deal here? Like, what, Chadley? All I'd right, go by cool. Lee. You know what I mean? I don't Whoa. want Chad in my yeah, life. Yeah, Lee would be sick, actually. Yeah, Lee's pretty cool. Lee, Lee's a pretty cool name. <laughs> uh, we can stop it there. But yeah, if you want to go, uh, go over to the BAFTA website to check out the rest of the list of nominees. Uh, I love Game Awards season. Just I seeing know, what. And I love that it never ends. Out. Here we are in March, still talking about last yeah, year's game. We're already it's a great. quarter of the way through through 2024. Still talking about 2023. It's great. Man. You got a little. What a bit. year. You know what else you got to love? Patreon.com slash kind of funny and YouTube.com slash kind of funny games over on both outlets, both platforms. You can get the kind of funny membership, which allows you to get shows ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays, an independent sunglasses brand that has over 300,000 five star reviews. They're on a mission to match affordability with durability making top quality shades accessible to everyone. They have tons of styles and colors to pick from, so finding the best polarized shades is a breeze. Get ready for a whole new level of clarity with Shady Ray's Pro Polarized Lenses. This lens tech is all about tough durability and vibrant colors that pop. Here at Kinda Funny, we all love wearing our Shady Rays. Whether it's Tim looking dope during his Pokemon Go walks, Snowbike Mike rocking the snow goggles, or Joey just looking fantastic in her tangle-free shades. If your shades go MIA or take a hit, don't sweat it. They've got lost and broken protection, so you're covered from day one. And if you don't love your shades, exchange or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Exclusively for y'all, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Head to ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 300,000 people. Again, that is ShadyRays.com and use code KF20 for $20 off each pair of polarized sunglasses. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Whether it's friends, partners, or coworkers, I am blessed to have many amazing relationships in my life. But a common misconception about relationships is that they have to be easy to be right. But sometimes the best ones happen when both people put in the work to make them great. Therapy can be a place to work through the challenges you face in all of your relationships, whether it's with friends, work, your significant other, or anyone else. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself, and it isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash kindoffunny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash kindoffunny. And we're back with Snow White Mike and... Hey guys. Story number three, we got everything announced at the March 2024 Xbox Partner Preview. I'm pulling from Tomas Francis at Digital Trends. I, don't know. I just made up that pronunciation. Ooh. I don't know if that's Ooh. how really you pronounce like that. that. <laughs> uh, the second ever Xbox Partner Preview just took place, and it gave us a deeper look at some of the third-party games coming to Xbox. Uh, let's start off with 11-Bit Studios, who took the stage. Uh, it turns out that 11-Bit Studios was the third-party publisher with the strongest showing at this Xbox Partner Preview, as it platformed three of its upcoming games. Most notably, it, it announced a new Xbox console exclusive called Creatures of Ava. In Creatures of a Ava, uh, players save creatures from an infection called the withering and then get the help of those creatures to solve puzzles and further explore its fantasy world it looks like the legend of zelda by way of pokemon all with the non all with non-violent combat that's more focused on healing and restoring infected creatures than hurting them it launches later this year on xbox series x and pc then Final Fantasy XIV uh, for Xbox launches this month. In the wake of the release of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, Square Enix used this Xbox show to announce the full release of the MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, on Xbox. It'll exit its beta trial period on March 21st. Uh, Persona 3 Reload gets the answer this September. Uh, following a successful launch in February, Persona 3 Reload will receive new DLC called Episode Aegis, The Answer. I guess. I guess. God damn it. It's fucking four. That's not no, on that, you. That, that, that one's not on, not on you. And you, like, I know where you, you are in the playthrough. You have not met that character, so... Carlock. <laughs> it launches this September and finally brings the answer content from Persona 3 FES to the remake. Before that, a March 12th update will add uh, background music sets based on Persona 5 Royal and Persona 4 Golden, while a May update will introduce costumes and a background music set based on the Velvet Room. All of this is part of the expansion for, or expansion pass for Persona 3 Reload. And then... Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess gets a gameplay overview. Capcom's Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess showed off a striking sense of style when it was first teased last year, but we now have a better idea of how the game will actually play. In the trailer, we see, the, the, we see that during the day, players are tasked with guiding a maiden and clearing its fantasy world of defilement to collect resources. They must then make <laughs> tower defense game style preparations before nighttime with resources used to fend off hordes of enemies although players actively are fighting enemies on their own it's possible to command other units to help deal with the threats kunitsugami path of the goddess launches later this year uh, as far as everything else that was shown off we had unknown nine awakening gameplay uh, which was revealed by bandai namco and it was confirmed for launch on xbox this summer Stealth Sim Slate of the Hand was revealed with a cinematic trailer. Roblox horror game Griefville survived the nightmares crossing over with Chucky. Finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's happening. Insane. Uh, Frogwares announced uh, the, the Sinking City 2, which releases in 2025. Stalker Legends of the Zone trilogy launches today. Monster Jam Showdown was announced with Roger McCorney was Woo! getting hyped about that one. Uh, the first Berserker Kazan got a new trailer. And then Tales of Kinzera Zhao highlighted his combat and traversal mechanics in a new trailer narrated by abu bakar salim hell yeah there's a lot there a lot mike you did a good job thank you i appreciate it you live reacted to it yesterday with the kind of funny x cast mm -hmm. what was the overall tone coming out of it were people pleasantly surprised yeah uh, from everything that i saw in our impressions from me in paris was very positive right i think xbox is doing a very good job with these presentations to kick off the new year right We've had a lot of bad in the Xbox world to start off 2024, but you've had mm -hmm. some good. Developer underscore direct was a big hit. Then you move into this, the third-party partner preview. Love that, right? Where you get to see games that are coming to your ecosystem that might not be your first-party normal titles that you know about. And I think there was a really good kind of like wide breadth of games that you got to saw that you got to see. Mm -hmm. And you know the big ones that stood out to us were the altars. I don't know if you brought that. Yeah, one that's up, one that I missed out on. Was definitely one that everyone should circle highlight and look up this game has got a very interesting kind of premise to it yeah. that you haven't really seen before and i think it's really fun of this guy's out there in space and he has the opportunity to clone himself but every clone that you make of yourself will have a different memory and a different decision that you made in your life so if you dropped out of oh. school that clone will be the one that goes to school maybe and he has different oh. goals and like different mindset than you hmm. do the next one might 
of fought a little bit harder in your marriage and kept the marriage going as opposed to you that didn't, right? And so the clones all will help you build out this central base, it looks like, but each one will kind of have its own personality and mindset, and maybe there'll be some clashing during this, but it had very much returnal, like, mysterious space vibes to it. It had a very cool, like, Fallout Shelter-looking base Mm. building Mm. inside of this weird spaceship, but if there's a game that you should highlight and look up, it is The Alters. This was the show stealer. This space station looks a little bit like Prey to me as well. Definitely. A lot of Prey vibes. Yes. And so we really liked that. We liked the overall tone of the vibe, right? Like, this was 30 minutes, 14 trailers, right to the point. No Sarah Bond, no Phil Spencer, no Matt Booty. We have one, uh, like... Just one voiceover, yeah. not not really who, jumping in that. Was but Oliver was the, Nelson was doing yeah, that? I was going to say it was the gentleman cool. who made El Paso uh, elsewhere, but very good all around. This was a tight presentation. Gave you fourteen games. Uh, like I brought up, the Alters was a big one. Final Fantasy getting the full one release date is a big deal for Xbox fans. That's a big MMO coming your way. Sleight of Hand looks cool with the tone and the idea of it. We did not see any gameplay for this, but I did like the overall message of. Of this is kind of cool third person stealth with like kind of a card based mechanic here oh, you saw a lot of cards speaking to me in this so keep an eye out for that one the creatures of ava was cute right it's a creature collector game so if you're interested in that kind of vibes i think that's I, gonna go well I, I on paper it sounds on my alley right yes. then talking about zelda like the legend of zelda by way of like pokemon i'm like that sounds so like my shit but then i looking at the actual trailer of it I don't like how those creatures look. Yeah, <laughs> I don't yeah. like the creatures. I, I don't think I think that's for a different audience uh, than you and I, but mm-hmm. I think it speaks to people. I think that's the big message of this. 14 different trailers that are going to speak to a large ecosystem. Not everything is tailored to you. We've talked about this many of times from PlayStation State of Plays to Xbox Summer Showcases. Is They're going to show a lot because they have a lot of games, and some of them aren't going to speak to you, but there's for a different audience. Perfect example is the Roblox one, mm-hmm. right? We get to see a Roblox add-on game being showcased at a mega kind of presentation i don't think we've seen that yet to this date and Mm -hmm. i thought that was really cool right roblox whether you play it or not is one of the most played video games on the planet to be showcased in a partner preview with a mini game within that pretty wild to me i thought that was pretty rad and rounding it out you you talked about persona 3 and the special expansion pass Mm -hmm. a big reminder is that is included on xbox game pass ultimate Mm -hmm. a lot of the dlc and expansions for certain first party games aren't tied to your xbox game pass kind of list there Mm -hmm. so always remember to look that up but it is going to be included on your perks so if you have xbox game pass ultimate you get all three of those question about the persona stuff barrett i remember when persona 3 reload was announced there was a lot of like oh man it's not the right version of this game it's not the full version of this game is this dlc remedying that so uh, 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 uh in the past sim so there's persona 3 which was just the base game that's the remake that came out uh a month ago right there was persona 3 fez which acted like a persona 4 golden uh or persona 5 royal where they uh, uh updated some mechanic things i think and then there was a like <clears throat> new story chunk uh, that acted as an epilogue. Then there was Persona 3 Portable, where uh, that was on the PSP, where you could uh, play through the the normal game uh, with the main character, but then they added a female uh, version of the main character, which kind of um, re like mixed some social links, some friendships, some story beats, all that stuff. And so when the remake got announced, uh, people were disappointed in the one-two punch of uh, no uh, addition of the answer, which was the added uh, story stuff from uh, Persona 3 Fez, and no FemC from Persona 3 Portable. So this is like the the the, the one step I think that they realistically can make uh, for Persona 3 uh, Remake, which is adding the uh, added story stuff from uh, Persona 3 Fez. Um, it is a hotly contested uh, uh, piece of, uh, of of content. Mm. Um, very divisive, eh, not very divisive. A lot of people have just been coming out very brave, uh, brave takes of it wasn't very good. Which honestly, like it as like a added thing, yeah, it's very monotonous. It's very tedious. It's not fun to play. <clears throat> story wise, I think it's Great. really well. Story wise, I think it is like a really good piece mm. of uh, like epilogue for the the main uh story and like kind of unpacking how all of these characters feel after the main events of persona 3 and with the gameplay updates that they already made with uh persona 3 uh reload like i think 
I could see this kind of being a like the version to play of uh, of the answer. The thing that's still missing and will probably never happen is FemC uh, is playing her route and having all the the remixed uh, social links and all that stuff. And that's just because that is a huge undertaking. That's like that's a full other remake essentially mm. so um i i would not hold my breath uh anybody out there for uh, a fem c drop at any point i feel like this is probably their post-launch plan and that's it um which is a, a kind of at least outside of the background music and costume stuff which is i've always found kind of stupid and don't waste your money on that shit um but like adding this, uh, the answer as like post-launch DLC rather than coming out with a full different skew, I do think is kind of new for uh, Persona, uh, at least in my understanding. Um, so it would have been nice if this launched with the answer. Uh, it, it's not as bad as it could have been. Of like, all right, let's make a Persona Three Reload uh, Blue uh, yeah. different skew that also now has the answer. Um, so yeah. yeah, I feel like at that point it's like, you're doing too much, you yeah. know, like that's what that is. It's the, the expectation with persona, right? Where persona five comes out, we're probably going to get like an ultimate version. And then you get persona five Royal. That's what they do with these things. But persona three reload being another version of persona three and then them going, all right, now let's make another, another version. Like that feels like it's, yeah. it's, you're stretching it. Um, and so I'm excited for it. I like, I, I say, I, my critiques of the answer are critiques of what the answer was 18 years ago. I uh, imagine it's not going to be nearly as long with like the updates that were already given to Persona 3 Reload. So if you're new to Persona 3, um, I would still highly uh, recommend ch uh, checking it out if you've been enjoying Persona 3. Uh, I think it makes sense to kind of launch this not at the same time as the main game because it is an epilogue. It is taking place after the events of the main game. So, um, yeah. One that I want to highlight here is Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess. That was the Capcom game that we got the reveal of last year. That and was the worst showcase we've ever seen. Yeah, wait, which showcase? Oh, was that the during Capcom the Capcom showcase? showcase? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a weird one. Because, yeah, like, I, this is a game that when they revealed it, I think we're all like, what is this? Like, yeah. is it a strategy game? Is it an action game? This looks like something we've not seen before. Uh, we saw more. I like this is like one of the few trailers I actually uh, took the time to check out and watch the full thing because this is one that I'm fascinated about. And it still continues to look like a weird, different thing, but in a way that I appreciate. So. I, me too. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, seeing this here, it's like, oh, this kind of answers questions that we had that first time. And I was like, oh, this actually is not the most interesting thing, but it is interesting. I feel like that's like a, knowing the pedigree that Capcom has of like, cool tower defense stuff of preparing and then at night actually doing the more action capcom -y battles yeah. that's a cool it's idea fascinating in a way that you know i think I, was, I, was, I mentioned this on monday when i was doing the show with roger that you know i was doing a stream and i was talking about uh capcom and i was talking about like you know i was adding in resident evil 2 remake to like my top 100 games and i think i was adding street fighter 6 as well and i was just talking about capcom right and like one of the things it brought up was like yeah, like what misses has Capcom had recently? There are people brought up Exoprimal. And I'm like, man, if Exoprimal is like one of your misses, you're doing pretty good. Because yeah. Exoprimal, I thought was pretty fun. And I, like at the worst, that game is fine. That game is like fine to forgettable, right? But it's not bad. Like that is, that's still somewhat of a quality game depending on who you are. Uh, for Capcom to go, all right, we got our wins with things like Resident Evil, things like Street Fighter. You know, you look at the last five years of Capcom and they've been killing it. To then take a sidestep and go, hey, let's make something weirder, right? Like, I like that. You know, I think for me, that I am more, I am almost more interested in this than if Capcom were to do another Resident Evil remake. Like, we've gotten so many of those. Yeah. I'm, looking toward, I'm looking forward to Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess to see, like, all right, this is different. What you got? Is it going to hit? Because if it does hit, guess what? We got something cool and different like we have something great and different i think that, that that for me that sounds really awesome yeah and it's on game pass love and that game, game pass. very cool so all in all a really good time 30 minutes 14 trailers a lot of games for you to check out first berserker put on your list as well i think you and andy first that's berserker. right up your uh lane it's more of a dark soulsy vibe with a very cool art style Ooh. gonna be right up your lane Barry, for you can guys. you bring up a trailer for and, the uh, first that's berserker? all i got for you from the xbox thing it was an all-around Good time. If you want to learn more about uh, Tales of Kenzera, myself and Paris had a very good developer interview. Love it. Oh, very this cool. looks cool. Yeah, it has um, more of an animated art style to it, but yeah, the combat. The like, combat, yeah. I like it, the red against the white. Very yeah, cool. it's like a, s a snowy setting, but yeah, yeah, you have like the red of the blood. Oh, yeah, you open a big door. That's very souls. Someone you in the chat was saying that the game was first shown at the uh, Xbox showcase last year. Oh, I Path remember. Of the remember uh, uh, yeah. 
remember what that was the one that the, because of the flight delays we missed the xbox showcase oh and so it was the, and yeah. then we watched the capcom thing right after and they they showed the game again again so it was like both of them and it was that weird extended cut where it's like the camera was like zooming in weirdly yeah. it's like what's going on here remember when, remember when they delayed pragmata <laughs> during that showcase yeah. oh yeah dude. sorry in the most bizarre way ever sorry <laughs> when did they delay it to was it this year did they have like a new year? It was like they crossed out 2023 and then just had a question mark and then a frowny face and then sorry. Insane. Also, Insane. Chad, I, like, I'm pretty sure this isn't connected, but this isn't connected to Berserk, uh, right? What? Pragmata? No, oh, no, the, you're talking this about game. this. No, yeah. I don't think it is. This no. looks fucking cool this, this looks as cool, hell. What yeah. is this? Yeah, who, who makes this? Berserker, first Berserker Kazan. We're going to Google this shit. While I do, though, Tim... We just talked about a lot of big old news. We did. But if I wanted something smaller, say the tiniest news I needed to know about, where would I go? You'd go to our last story, the Wii News Channel, where we cover all the small news items you need to know about. That's right. It's time for our final news story. I can read these for Story you. number four. Oh, no, I got it. I got oh. everything opened here. Um, so the first Berserker, Kazan, comes from publisher Nexon, the same indie publisher that put out um, Dave the Diver. Uh, the first Berserker, Kazan, is a hardcore action role-playing game uh, the player will become Kazan, <laughs> the great general of the Pell. You're Wilson such Empire. a fuck. You're <laughs> such a fuck. Make it the joke, a great joke. Then you go and you laugh at yourself words later. I'm fucking hilarious. <laughs> um, it's being developed by, by Neopole. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know where this came from, but it looks awesome. Go get him. Go get him. We news for you. Uh, let's start off with Unicorn Overlord reviews. They are out. It is sitting on Metacritic at an 88. VG247 gave it four out of five stars. IGN gave it nine out of uh, nine out of ten and mm -hmm. says Unicorn Overlord is a visual delight that's brimming with creativity and an absolute must play for any fan of strategy RPGs. Arrowhead Game Studios has announced Helldivers 2's yeah, Hell Divers 2's latest Warbond, uh, Warbond Cutting Edge, will launch uh, for PS5 and PC on March 14th. Hell Divers 2 is also seemingly locking the release of mechs behind the liberation of a planet. Head to IGN for more on that. Focus Entertainment will rename itself to Pull Up Entertainment as of April 1st. Huh. Pull Why? Up Entertainment. Focus right. is a better name, though. Yeah, I like, uh, Focus. Yeah, Focus is a pretty good name. I wonder if that's like a merger or like acquisition type thing or... Why would you change it? I mean, pull-ups are impressive. It's also April 1st. Maybe it's a joke. Fly on. Maybe we get a trailer that day. The <laughs> CEO doing pull-ups. <laughs> He's trying to show his gains. Uh, pull-up will split into three divisions. Uh, they'll have their publishing division. We'll have Dotemu, which will publish indie titles. And then they'll have development with internal studios like Dovetail Games or Deck 13. Uh, next up, Princess Peach Showtime has a demo that's out now on Switch. Spider-Man 2's New Game Plus is now live. Uh, next week's Epic Game Store free games have been announced. They'll be free to claim from March 14th to the th uh, 21st. You'll have Deus Ex Mankind Divided uh, and then The Bridge. I don't know what The Bridge is, but Deus Ex, sick. Play Deus Ex. And then last up for you, Overwatch 2 is crossing over with Cowboy Bebop on March 12th. Uh, so interesting. There's a video for this one, and it is fascinating because... You know, I'm not against it. Both very cool things. Yeah. I love Overwatching. I know so many people that love Cowboy Bebop. This is awesome. But why? <laughs> Wait, did you not watch Cowboy Bebop, Les? No, I didn't watch Cowboy you Bebop. You would love Cowboy Bebop. Dude, I probably you would. Specifically, yeah. would love Cowboy Bebop. I missed out on it back I don't, in the day. Uh, here, here's the thing. 26 Les. episodes. Did I watch it? Oh, yeah. The, oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. You, you know, like, uh, the joke when Persona 5 was, uh, like came out is that, like, they just kind of took the style and the music and all that stuff from Cowboy Bebop. I do like that style from Persona 5. Yeah. And honestly, every scene every scene I see from Cowboy Bebop, I'm like, this looks cool. This looks awesome. I do think it would be my shit, but I've just not gotten around to it. Yeah. You said it's only 26 episodes? Yeah, it's super short. Oh, sad. I mean, it, it might even be less than that. It might be like 23 or something like that. Maybe but it's, I'll do it. And they're 20-minute episodes. Yeah, maybe I'll do it. Yeah, I'm going to find it's I'm great, gonna find one of these weekends. Maybe when I'm done with Shogun. What a show. What a show. That's it for Wii News. Um, this is one of these I wanted to comment on. Oh, Unicorn Overlord. You can cut the music, Barrett. You know, we can't have too much of a good thing. Uh, Unicorn Overlord was one that, like, so none of us here have deep impressions. You know, talking to uh, Barrett and Greg, I think all of us had the same thing where we played the first hour or so, and we're just like, oh, this game seems really good, but it's not, it's like not our thing. Yeah. You know, even for me as somebody who, you know, I like Vanillaware. I know Greg also loves Vanillaware. I like Unicorn Overlord, or um, I like uh, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. As I started playing Unicorn Overlord, I had the thing where I was like, oh, this just this isn't the same setting 
like the setting was such a big part of why I liked uh, 13 Sentinels. It was sci-fi, it was mechs, it was school, it was like a lot of like modernized stuff. Whereas Unicorn Overlord is such a fantasy strategy RPG, mm -hmm. and I am not a fantasy strategy RPG person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, kind of like I, I I wanted to check uh, check it out, uh, especially because I had drafted it for the um, uh, fantasy critic as well. Um, and yeah, after like even before like. I was done with my first hour. I just my eyes really started to glaze over. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm stoked for the people who uh, uh, played it for review and, and loved it. I'm stoked for the people who are uh, anticipating this because it seems like a great game. But yeah, not my alley. Yeah, we got some super chats, plus. We do have some super chats. Uh, Gonzu says new game plus Spider Man. Let's go. Uh, you interested in popping in at all? No, no. Yeah, at all. like yeah. looking at the things being added, I'm like, oh, I don't think there's anything here that like is enticing to me. Yeah, let me open me. up the list because I saw they're adding new if costumes. It was four was months cool. ago, maybe, you know? Yeah. Yeah, new game plus game ultimate, what's an ultimate level? Ultimate levels. Probably like difficulty. It's like new difficulty. Uh, gold gadgets. It's a gold gadget. Mission replay. Let's go. That's awesome. Uh, you can change the time of day. Hellfire gala suits. Oh, the Hellfire gala suits is actually pretty nice. Oh, yeah. I wish they had that at launch though. Like I totally would have played the entire game rocking the Miles Morales Hellfire gala suit. Uh, ultimate levels go beyond the base game level cap in NG+. Plus. Mm. There you go. Um, action figure mode. And then they have audio descriptions for accessibility. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not... It's, it's that thing where I'm like, I wish... Like, I wish this would drop with, like, maybe a new mission type. Like, a new mission... Like, if there was any new content, I, 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 would, get, I would get back in there. But I don't feel like going back just to, like, redo the same stuff I've already yeah, done. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you uh let's see Z uh, zero swift says hey guys was just wondering if there was any update on the kind of funny up-and-comer opportunity for 2024 love what y'all do heart emoji no update yet uh, but joey and i talk about it very often and uh we're working on stuff and it will happen this year uh cj splitson says insomniac let us throw out miles toothpaste suit i don't know what that means his final suit in the game oh uh, people don't like where do you stand on that suit i i spider-man spider-man have so many suits I'm not going to love them all. Is it my favorite suit? No. Do I think people are hating on it way too much? Yes. People went real hard on that yeah. suit. And like, I get it. I, I'm not in love with it either. Like, I would just prefer his classic. It is suit. one of my least favorite Miles suits it, it, I've seen. Here's the thing. It's, it's a bad design. And they try to make it a story moment without it being earned whatsoever. Yeah. And I also don't think it makes sense because he didn't Miles make his suit like that he already has. Because the story beat was that. He was like, I gotta make I gotta, mine. <laughs> like, yeah, I gotta do it know, on my own way. I gotta it's do like, like my own original thing. And I'm what? like, didn't you make your suit? It was also just like a weird moment in the game for him to have that story be. I yeah. don't know, man. I mean, it was, it was all, very also very obviously like an uh, Adidas <laughs> like, like tie in to have it like match with the shoes, which I get. Listen, I'm all about. If that worked, that would be fucking sick. You yeah. know, like if it if the suit looked sick as hell and you had that tie in with the Adidas, that would be fucking awesome. But I think it's the fact that the suit doesn't look sick as hell. So now. The Adidas sponsorship or whatever that thing is, right? You're the tie-in. Right. Yeah, it kind of compounds it. Yeah. It's like, really? Okay, well, this is now lame. Uh, <laughs> we got one more super chat here. Joey Radstone says, uh, FF7 Rebirth is so much more horny than Remake. Thanks for facts, paying us money dude. to say that. That's facts, bro. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the horniest thing I think I've ever experienced. No way. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Rebirth? Yeah. Oh, you've not experienced enough horny. <laughs> I got some games for you, too. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the horniest thing that, that's not actively supposed to be horny. You get what I'm saying? It's a horny game without being a hentai game, Bliss. Yeah, like what, what, what would you say is hornier than Final Fantasy? Let me tell you Seven about Rebirth. this game called Unicorn Overlord. Yeah? This girl's wearing a... Uh, uh, See, that's different, though. <laughs> she's, she's wearing a fucking turtleneck, and the titties are still popping out that's that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not joking. It's like, wild. It's that's fucking not a wild, joke. dude. Literally, she's wearing she's a turtleneck. She's got, like, a, a, a corset <laughs> thing that's supposed to go over the sweater, but no, those titties are titty. Yeah. It's fucking In a turtleneck. That's so <laughs> like, fucking crazy. funny. People uh, in chat are saying Baldur's Gate. Uh, yeah, I got said saying Fire Emblem Fates. I mean, there is. I think, like, horny. Like, dude. In what way is, is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth horny? Just that, like, that there's tension. At any point, any character might want to fuck each other. Any combination, dude. How are you going to tell me the opening scene That's of Sephiroth chemistry. and Cloud, bro? Let me tell you about Baldur's Gate. When he calls him a puppy? <laughs> I mean, but like that's not horny. When he that's says just, you're panting, that's just that's just that's chemistry. not horny. That's chemistry. <laughs> this is them getting along. <laughs> you never gotten along with somebody before. <laughs> 
play some Baldur's Gate 3. Because in there, like, not only is it like that, but they actually do fuck. Like, that's like, it's like, they're, it's like, okay, there's some tension here, but then they take it all the way. That, and I, guess, I guess that's, that's my thing is like, I'm, when I say horny, I mean, not, you're not following through with the fucking. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Okay. Like, like horny is like, it, it's, it's the energy of a 13 year old boy. You know what I mean? Uh huh. Like walking into a, 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 a store where there's porn, like a porn, like a Playboy's there, and you're pretending you're not looking at it, but you're fucking looking at it, and everyone knows you're looking at it. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I know exactly what you're talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's Been Final there. Fantasy VII. Fair enough. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. Are you writing a list of what we got wrong as you got it wrong? So we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. Let's see here. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, someone in the chat said it's the, the energy of a middle school dance. That's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, bro. Plus, okay, you ever I, hear about freak dancing? <laughs> what's freak dancing? Is that like, is that like oh, grinding? You don't, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think in like Illinois, it would be called like juking. Sick. Yeah, juking. <laughs> what a time. Freak dancing here. At the freak area. dancing. Like, y'all oh, don't even yeah, try to hide it. Freaking. Yeah. God damn. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tundra Boy says the Pragmata de uh, uh, delay trailer was at the Capcom showcase, not the Xbox showcase. I don't think we got that wrong. I think the mix-up is we're, we're talking about Path of the Goddess. Tim first said T Path of the Goddess appeared at Capcom. It appeared at Xbox, but also it was at Capcom. Yeah, technically they're right, though. It was first at Xbox. It was, yeah. just, it was the same day. But yeah, we all know the Pragmata de uh, delay was at Capcom. And then... Uh, 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 Read the Pragmata delay. The year crossed out to a frowny face was when Capcom delayed it from 2022 to 2023. The most recent delay from 2023 to who knows when was via a message in the trailer <laughs> shown in last year's Capcom showcase. No window this time. I'm pre I would swear that had a frowny face to it, though. I'm like 95% sure there was a frowny face in Wall. <laughs> like, I don't remember laughing. I'd be like, what the fuck? Like in Mandela effect. Uh, and then, I mean, I'm not in my universe anymore, like Greg. Yeah. And then, let's see. This is a tweet. I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the tweet reference. See, oh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. Oh, but that was 2022. No, this is from last year. Yeah, because it went from 2022 to 2023, and then they added the question mark with a very sawy, and then two. <laughs> <Very sorry. laughs> and then they, have, they have multiple frowny faces, and one of the faces has tears coming out. What are you doing over there? This, is such a, this has got to be the best way to announce. Yeah, it. yeah. I think I. You know what it is. I think Capcom hasn't had a, hasn't it like had an L in a minute, so they just forgot how to like <laughs> deal with the L's. Ah, shit, what do we do? <laughs> They're like, oh shit, we made a mistake. What do we do? That's Put so out a fucking note. That's Sally. Fun. Frowny face. Sally. Uh, I'm googling Unicorn Overlord for no reason. You know, for no reason. <laughs> Been there. Uh, Steven says, or not Steven. Somebody writes in and says, um, content around WB live servers game statement, and then it's a tweet from Steven Totillo who, who says, uh, you may have seen that a WB Discovery executive said they want more live servers games. I'm sure they do, but context may also help. Uh, this was at a Morgan Stanley conference where, oh, we talked about this, uh, where we execs hyped investors. Uh, gaming is such an after that, after that, after that. Yeah, I think this lines up exactly with what we said. Yeah. But cool. Wait, did you find some oh, yeah, stuff? It. Yeah. You see the, the turtleneck? I saw the turtleneck. <laughs> Insane. Yep. What are we doing? What are we doing? Meant to keep you warm, you know? <laughs> it looks warm. Uh, that's it for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, which means it's also it for kind of funny games daily. Wow. We did it, everybody. We did it. We made it. Uh, each and every weekday here, we run you through the nerdy news you need to know about live on YouTube, Twitch, and on podcast services around the globe. If you love what we do, support us with the Kind of Funny membership on Patreon or YouTube to get all of our shows ad-free, watch, record them live, and get a daily exclusive show. Until next time, game daily. <laughs>